Who was Sophie Germain? On April 1, 1776, in Paris, France, Marie Sophie Germain was born to Ambrose Francosis and Marie Madeleine. Ambrose was a wealthy silk owner, and therefore, education was readily given to Sophie from a young age. When Sophie was 13, she found a book about mathematics in her father's huge library. It was called The History of Mathematics by J. E. Montecula. She was amazed of how geometry could influence Archimedes so much, so she wanted to continue to study this subject, becoming fascinated with it herself. This experience influenced Sophie to become a great mathematician, even learning Latin and Greek in order to read ancient mathematical texts. At first, Sophie's fascination and obsession with numbers caused her friends and family to look on her with disappointment. Her parents did not support her work, citing that mathematics is for men. This did not stop Sophie. She continued to slave away over equations independently. While Sophie's parents never fully supported her work, her mother did begin to support her in secret. A major issue that Sophie faced throughout her career was gender discrimination. She was constantly looked down upon because she was a woman studying mathematics. This gender issue even caused Sophie to hide behind a pseudonym, like other women trying to overcome sexist issues. When she was first starting to study math, she went by the name of M. LeBlanc, discussing her work so that it was assumed that she was male. Even some of her correspondents did not realize she was a woman until much later in her career. In describing the honorable mission I charged him with, M. Pernetti informed me that he made my name known to you. This leads me to confess that I am not as completely unknown to you as you might believe, but that fearing the ridicule attached to a female scientist, I have previously taken the name of M. LeBlanc in communicating to you these notes that, no doubt, do not deserve the indulgence with which you have responded. Sophie's career started off slowly, beginning with small numbers, but eventually she came to hear of Fermat's last theorem. Fermat's theorem takes the equation x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n and says that if n is greater than 2, this equation will not hold. When branching out on her own and experimenting with Fermat's theorem, Sophie needed help and guidance, so she turned to Carl Friedrich Gauss, who is considered one of the most brilliant mathematicians who has ever lived. Gauss had never been interested in Fermat's theorem before, however, when he received Sophie's letters, he was so impressed by her breakthrough that he temporarily forgot his hatred of Fermat's last theorem and decided to help her with her work. When Gauss received these letters, he believed that he was corresponding with a man because Sophie was going by the name M. LeBlanc. When he found out she was a woman, he said, when a person of the sex which, according to our customs and prejudices, must encounter infinitely more difficulties than men, succeeds nevertheless in surmounting these obstacles and penetrating the most obscure parts of number theory, then, without doubt, she must have the noblest courage, quite extraordinary talents, and superior genius. Sophie's work was to try and prove that for prime exponents less than 100, there could be no solutions relatively prime to the exponent. While Sophie did end up proving her theory, she was never credited for this breakthrough, but continued to remain humble, saying, It matters little who first arrives at an idea. Rather, what is significant is how far that idea can go. Not only did Sophie have a passion for math, but she also studied philosophy and psychology. She studied these subjects because she wanted to classify facts and put them into laws to form a system. Sophie's work with math and her other interests took up most of her time, and she was never married and did not have any children. None of her other family members were mathematicians or scientists. However, her father did have a large collection of mathematical textbooks in her library, which is what sparked her interest in mathematics in the beginning. Since Sophie taught herself mathematics, most of her mathematical techniques were unique. 
Sophie collaborated often, like with her partner Gauss, but worked out most of the kinks in her problems by herself. H.J. Mozan said of Sophie Germain, All things considered, she was probably the most profoundly intellectual woman that France has ever produced. And yet, strange as it may seem, when the state official came to make out her death certificate, he designated her as a single woman with no profession, instead of a mathematician. Sadly, on June 27, 1831, the world lost one of its most brilliant minds in mathematics. Sophie Germain suffered and died from breast cancer, receiving very little credit for the work that she had put into the field. Today, Sophie is recognized for many of her accomplishments, and she even has hotels and schools dedicated in her honor. In answering the question proposed at the beginning of this video, who was Sophie Germain? One would say, Sophie Germain was a mathematician who loved philosophy and psychology and who devoted her life to working through Fermat's Last Theorem.